PixelWeb comes with many animations and useful functionality built in, but it would be pointless if you could not extend that with your own. In the following video, we will show you how to load your own code into PixelWeb. As you can see here, we have a sample animation that we want to be able to load into the PixelWeb interface. It has a number of parameters that we would like to be able to change from within the UI. Fortunately, PixelWeb comes with a tool for automatically generating a manifest stub. Just type pixelweb underscore gen manifest, followed by the path of your file. It'll process the file, and then automatically add a manifest stub to the bottom. As you can see, it's picked up the sample class that is the class of our animation. The controller is LED matrix, because it uses base matrix animation. We can add a description. We'll change the ID to be something a little bit more specific to the developer. Give a slightly more descriptive display name. For our first parameter, we did not specify a default, so it doesn't know what type it is. In this case, we're going to decide to make it a Boolean, which is going to show a simple on-off toggle switch in the UI. We'll give it a label, a help string, and since we didn't give it a default in the init method above, we'll set the default to false. Now the default obviously should match the type that you specify for that parameter. Next is pixel rate. There's already a default for that that it picked up from the init method above. We'll give it a help string and a label. But that's all we need to do for that. The labels will never be filled out automatically, so you'll have to do those yourself. Next, we have this dummy string value. It doesn't do anything, but just here to show you that you can do strings, and it picked up the default. That'll just show a nice text box. And here we've got another Boolean toggle switch. And last but not least, we've got the color input. So we'll give that a label as well, and a help string. And finally, you can see that it automatically picked up the red RGB color tuple, but we'd like that to be blue instead. That's it for the manifest. Now we just need to relaunch PixelWeb. So you can see it loaded all these modules, but hmm, sample.py is missing. So if you go into app config, you'll see there's this module directories. You need to put in the directory of the module files that you want to load into PixelWeb. So in this case, it's in my home directory. I click save and be prompted to restart the server. We'll go back to the terminal, kill PixelWeb with control C, and restart it. Now, if we scroll back up, you can see right here that it loaded sample.py. So let's go back to the PixelWeb UI. And this time we actually have to uh, start up an output device. In this case, we're going to use Visualizer. I've had this preset up before, so I'll just start that again. Now, if we go to the animations, we check the drop down. Lo and behold, sample animation. And we've got all the parameters that we just entered. So we'll go with the initial defaults, but let's make that go faster. So as you can see, all the controls that we specified in the sample animation manifest are now available in the PixelWeb UI. The following is a bit of a complex topic, so we highly recommend visiting the PixelWeb wiki and reading up on manifests before coming back to the video and proceeding with the rest. Next is the preconfig, which is useful for when you have something that you want to load into PixelWeb, but for which there might not be a UI element available. 
In this case, though, we're going to show you a simple example that could be loaded just to get the general idea of how preconfigs work. The following is a controller configuration that mirrors what you saw us previously load in the Pixel Web UI. We have an ID of sample config. Tell it to load the LED matrix class. Set the type to preset. The preset type to controller. Control type to matrix. We have a display and description. As you can see here, we've got some parameters that can be changed. But then what we really want is the preconfig, which are parameters that are preset. In this case, preconfig is actually given a function to call that will return the parameters that it needs. This will be more apparent in the advanced section later as to why we're doing this. Now that that's set, we'll launch Pixel Web again. Since we previously set up the modules directly, you can see that it already loaded preconfig. We'll refresh Pixel Web in the browser. It will take us to the output setup. We're going to leave Visualize the same. And as you can see, though, we've got width is 16 by 16, which matches the controller preconfig that we just made. Now, if we go to the controller selection, you can see that sample config shows up right at the top, and the two modifiable parameters show up right at the bottom as they would with a normal controller. As before, we can run animations just like with any controller. But remember, this is just a simple demonstration of how a preconfig works. Next, we'll take a look at a more advanced preconfig. In this case, one that takes advantage of BiblioPixel's multiple driver support, which requires a pixel coordinate map, something not currently supported in the Pixel Web UI. As you can see here, we have a configuration that's very similar to the last preconfig that we did. But in this case, when you go to Gen Display Params, we have Multi Map Builder, which builds pixel coordinate maps merging two separate displays together. For the final params, we've set the width to 10 and the height to 20, the total dimensions of the two displays together. Now that that's done, we'll run Pixel Web again. And again, as you can see, it loads the dual matrix module. So for refresh Pixel Web, go to the output settings. We've now got dual matrix. But as I mentioned, this requires two outputs. So we're going to have to add a couple of drivers. First, we'll modify the first one we had to be 10 by 10, half of the total display size. But now we have to add another driver. Just click the plus. So we'll add another visualizer, make it another 10 by 10 display. And then we're going to go into the advanced settings, because visualizer needs to run on a separate port if you have more than one running at any time. So we'll change that to 1619, the default 1618. Leave everything else the same. And two visualizers will start. So if we go back to animations, we're going to run Bloom. And as you can see, the two displays act as one. Setting up multiple displays is on the enhancement list for Pixel Web and will be in the UI in the near future. But this just goes to show that you can do anything you can do in BiblioPixel inside of Pixel Web if you just do a little bit of setup beforehand with a preconfig and its manifest. But this is just scratching the surface of what can be done with the manifest system. More documentation can be found on the Pixel Web Wiki, but don't forget that you can check out the Maniacal Labs forums at forum.maniacallabs.com if you need more assistance. Thanks for watching.